So, so the paper I wrote is called The Price of Anarchy in Basketball. Uh, and the basic idea was to make a formal analogy between a basketball offense and a traffic network. Um, sort of my idea was that basketball is a network problem where every play represents a pathway that you can take in moving the ball from the inbounds pass to the goal. And so you can think about how do I optimize the performance of my offense in a similar way to how do I optimize flow through a network like flow through a uh, set of roads or flow through the internet or something like that. So I was just trying to adopt basic methods that people use in network theory and in game theory to approach uh, basketball. Yeah, so, so the Sloan Conference, I guess, is this fairly new invention. Uh, I, uh, MIT and ESPN teamed up to hold a big conference where they invite people who do uh, quantitative analysis in sports. And so there's this, this big event, people show up in Boston, there was over a thousand people this year, uh, you know, f athletes and uh, GMs and team owners and lots of nerdy statistician economist types. I showed up, I gave a 30 minute talk. It was surprisingly popular, I packed the little room that they gave me. Um, and there were some fairly big names, there was uh, a couple important sports writers, a couple team owners were in the audience, I was told afterward one or two athletes themselves, so it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, so the basic analogy is that every possible play is like a sequence of roads. So when a car tries to go from point A to point B, it has, to, it has uh, a set of options. I can go along this road and then turn on this one and so forth. When you try to score in basketball, you have a set of options, like I can run this play with then this option and this third option and so forth. So if you want to think about basketball as a network, then you can say, uh, movements of the ball are like links in the network. And every time a decision is made with the ball, you know, do I pass, do I shoot, do I go right around the screen, do I go left, that's like a node. And so if you draw out all the possibilities for moving the ball, you essentially are drawing a network. And you can think about how every different pathway has its own efficiency and you have to think about optimizing flow through the network, uh, which eventually, essentially comes down to efficiency of scoring. Uh, so if you think about everybody trying to commute to work, uh, each driver will try to take the road that gives them the shortest commute time. But what happens as a result is that that best road gets clogged up. It jams, and as a result, uh, it becomes less efficient, and everyone ends up with a longer commute. And it may be that no driver can improve their situation by taking a different path. But if at the very beginning they had all decided, well, let's use the roads a little more evenly here, then everyone's commute would have improved. Basketball plays become less efficient the more you use them. If you run the same play every time, then the defense starts to you know, clue into what's going on. And they focus in on that option. So if your team at the beginning decides, well, let's run our plays a little more evenly. Let's use the worst ones sometimes and use the best ones. And as a result, our best plays will keep their high efficiency and will do better overall. The, the benefit to doing statistics is that they don't have biases they don't have prejudices, and they see every single game. Uh, and so I, I think that in, in basketball, at least, statistics should really only be used when the coach thinks they make sense. Because the coach sees the game and understands it better than you know, the guy who created the formula. But I, I think we're still at the stage where they have to be used hand in hand. You can't trust the statistics on their own. You have to have someone watching the game looking at the numbers and saying, yes, this makes sense, or no, your formula didn't make sense.